And we've identified four critical issues that boys face and that they are ungrounded, they're unguided, they're unappreciated, and they're uninspired. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am thrilled that you are with me today and I am so honored that you have chosen to spend part of your day with me and with my guest, Mark Hancock. You are gonna be so encouraged by our conversation this week. We're gonna talk about boys, about raising godly boys. But before we get into that, I wanna say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. No parent should homeschool alone. You have a God-given calling to bring up your child, to love God, and to steward his creation. And BJU Press exists to help you be successful in that endeavor. Visit their website at bjupresshomeschool.com or call 1-800-845-5731 to connect with an experienced homeschool consultant. Now that it's summertime, this is a great time for you guys to do this as you're figuring out what you're doing for the next school year. Um, Give them a call. 1-800-845-5731 1-800-845-5731 and just talk to them, help them, let, let them help you figure out what's best for your family. Well, I am thrilled to be back with our guest today, um, Mark Hancock. We met, I think it's been, I don't even know when we met first. It's been a while, a um, couple years at least um, that we've known one another and kind of watched each other's ministries move and grow. And I'm truly honored to have you with me today. Mark is the CEO of Trail Life USA, which I know many of you are familiar with, but for those who are not familiar with Trail Life, um, you are going to be blown away by this ministry. Uh, Mark, introduce yourself and your family to us. Thanks, Yvette. Well, I, I'm privileged to serve as CEO of Trail Life USA, but uh, my crowning glory is my my relationship with my wife. They're coming up on 35 years of marriage in December. We raised two boys, homeschooled. Um, one is teaching at a Christian classical academy in Atlanta, and the other, Logan, is a junior at uh, at Liberty University. So homeschooling works. Um, both boys uh, ended up being on full ride scholarships. Praise God forever. And uh, <laughs> so homeschooling works. So I'd love to love to talk with homeschooling families. It's, it's kind of our tribe. Yeah, I love that. We were just talking before we hit record about um, you're you're all over the place right now at homeschool conventions, which I think is so cool. And you guys do so many amazing things, just getting the family involved. And you're all about boys. You're all about raising boys to become godly men. And we, I think it, it's been a few months um, since we did an episode on raising girls. And it's so funny because I think about boys and I'm like, I, I, I don't even know. I mean, I, I've said this, I'm sure you said this when we talked about girls is the only thing I know about boys is that they make really funny noises. And once they get into those teen years, they smell really bad. <laughs> I, I remember going to, um, well, it's a few friends I've had, you know, I'll go to their houses and walk by their teenage boys rooms. And I'm like, whoa, what is happening? And my girls rooms pretty much always smell like flowers and perfume and lotion and all that stuff. And boys don't seem to do that. They don't go to Bath and Body Works and get the most manly lotion that no, they can get. They don't. <laughs> so, no. So since I don't know anything about boys, I'm going to let Mark uh, share with us this week about how to raise godly boys. And I think this is so important for our culture today because we live in a culture where uh, boys are being raised um, in a lot of ways to be sissies. And as a mom of girls, that's really scary for me and for my husband. I mean, we want godly, manly men to be raised up. And we pray for this. We've prayed for this since the day we found out that we were having girls you know, that God would be raising godly men for them. And um, so talk with us first. I want to talk about Trail Life USA. What is Trail Life USA? Why do you exist? And then we're going to get into kind of some nuts and bolts about what it looks like to raise these boys to become godly men. Yeah, well, great question. Trail Life USA is a Christ-centered, boy-focused character leadership and adventure organization. We're now in all 50 states out of a, thou- a thousand churches are running Trail Life USA troops, over 50,000 members across the country. And what we are is an outdoor organization for boys. And we believe that boys and girls are different, like you said, <laughs> and we think that boys need uh, experiences that are specifically designed for them. But it's everything you would expect from an outdoor organization for boys, troops and patrols and handbooks and uniforms and a, a robust awards program and hiking and camping and all the outdoor stuff. And, and uh, But it is Christ-centered. And it is boy focused. It's been another organization around for over 100 years uh, that has given us presidents and senators and and congressmen and astronauts and all these things. But uh, a couple of years back, they began to lose their way, 
and and they've kind of lost their their sense of of the of the value specifically of boys and how boys need programs that are aimed aimed at them and develop developed for them. So Trail Off USA has stepped into that gap, and we're unapologetically Christian and we're also boy focused, and that's 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 a big deal right now, as as you referred to. This some of the conditions that our boys are facing in our our culture today. Yeah, yeah. I love your vision. It says um, that the vision of um, Trail Life USA is to be the premier national character development organization for young men, which produces godly and responsible husbands, fathers, and citizens. And and I love that the first thing you have in there is character development, because I think that's what's lacking in so many other um, things, but to then produce godly and responsible husbands, fathers, and citizens. And that's, of course, where we come in is the parents of girls is that we're seeking that for our girls as well and praying fervently for that. Um, and so, so how do you do that in this world that is telling us, you know, everything contrary to the word of God, how are you doing that in a practical way? Yeah, well, it's really difficult for boys today. And we can get into some of those statistics later on, but, but I, I, in your question, you know, we, we've developed in trail, if you say a proven process for turning boys into godly men. <clears throat> through a lot of study and spending a lot of time with boys and understanding boys and researching boys and reading a lot about boys. My background is mental health counseling and marriage and family therapy and pastoral counseling and, and youth pastor and, and of course, uh, hundreds of volunteers, thousands of volunteers across the country helping us to understand what works for boys. And we've identified four critical issues that boys face and that they are ungrounded, they're, un, uh, they're unguided, they're unappreciated, and they're uninspired. So through Trail Life USA, we address those things. We help to guide boys, ground them, appreciate them, and inspire them. And the outdoors is the perfect place for doing that. If that, you know, you read in our mission, it doesn't really uh, state exactly what it is that we do in our vision. It says what it is that we see. And we really believe that the outdoors in a male-centric environment is the best uh, environment for raising for raising godly boys. It takes godly men to raise godly boys. And though women are doing an amazing job in our culture, particularly single moms, but those single moms are crying out to God saying, I need some men around my boys, some good Christian solid men to help me raise my sons. And we're providing that for the single moms. And then we also have dads and sons in the program who are, who are growing together. And we're doing that. We're, we're guiding them, we're grounding them, we're appreciating them, and we're giving them great inspirational challenges. And that's what boys need. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. When we were living in Georgia, uh, my girls did American Heritage Girls, which is kind of the sister troop to Trail Life. Mm -hmm. um, so oftentimes families will have their boys in Trail Life and their girls in American Heritage Girls. And it was so neat to see the boys because we would go on camping trips with them. And I mean, these boys, and, and I mean, they were little guys too, you know, all the way up to, of course, teenagers. And we'd be trying to figure out how to set up our tent, which <laughs> as a matter of fact, the first camping trip we went on was the first camping trip my girls and I had ever gone on together. Oh my goodness. And it was the first time we'd ever set up a tent. And so, you know, I'm like, I'm not exactly sure how to do this. And of course the boys would just come over and say, you know, can we help you? And they would help us un unpack it and stuff. And it was like, they just felt this sense of, of belonging and they, they were needed and they, yeah. they just would light up like, Oh, I'm needed. And I can show my manlyhood, you know, by my, my manhood by doing yeah. this and helping yeah. these girls. Um, just to set up camp. And so it's such a neat organization. Let's take a break. And then when we come back, I want to start kind of going through the, the, the proven process that you talk about of raising godly men. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Mark. Uh, before the break, we were talking about the proven process that Trail Life has for growing these boys into godly men. And you talked about how boys are unguided, ungrounded, unappreciated, and uninspired. Mm -hmm. Can we kind of dissect each one of those things and talk about those specific problems, what the solution is, and, and kind of go through those? Sure, I'd love to. You know, we start out by saying that boys are unguided in our culture today. What does that mean? It means that, that they don't have male leadership that they can look up to. They're really lacking in that. You know, one in four boys now doesn't have a father in the household. 76% of public school teachers are female. 80-something percent of Sunday school teachers are female. So girls have these wonderful models of leadership, and boys are just lacking in, in those. 
And so that, that's something really missing. So they asked the question, what does it mean to be a man? You know, I think about a boy out in California who's in Trail Off USA and had a single mom, and he earned our highest award, which is the Freedom Award, which is, if you ever heard of the Eagle Scout, right. this is like that, but it's, it's more difficult and has faith elements to it. Well, he earned this, five, this highest award, and it's a, it was a huge achievement. There's only about 500 boys in the whole country who have been able to achieve that. And he stood in front of his troop, Yvette, uh, on the night that he got that award, and he said, I need to thank the men in this troop. You taught me how to shave, and you taught me how to love Jesus. And I thought, yeah, that's nailing it. That's what it is that we're doing for boys. We're giving them uh, practical models of male leadership, what it means to be a man. And then we're also giving this, this the spiritual side where they say what it means to be a godly man. And stories like that are just repeated across the country. Now, this isn't all, doesn't only have to happen in trail life. If you're leading a group of boys in any way at all, whether it's your Sunday school or whatever, these principles apply because boys need these things. They need to be guided. You need godly men to lead godly boys. That's why we have 17,000 volunteers across the country wow. leading boys, because boys need godly men as an example, because there's just so, so few that they get to see. In your book that you have, Growing Boys into Godly Men, it says that one in four boys are raised by a single mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's just crazy. I, yeah. I think that sometimes in the world that we live in, you know, as homeschool families and we go to church, which I know that, you know, happens in the church too, of course but we don't see the bigger picture of that. And one in four boys, I mean, that is a lot of boys who are being raised by women, mm -hmm. but without that male influence. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, and it's not to be critical of women at all. Like I said, they're doing sure. an amazing job, but you can't uh, just dismiss the fact that these boys don't have the examples that they need of somebody who looks like them in a leadership position. And so, therefore, there's, they're dismissed in so many ways because it's like they don't know, they don't know who to be. So we provide a male-centric environment in Trail Off USA. From fifth grade and up, it's the troop contact is all men. Now, for the younger boys, we start at kindergarten, go all the way through 18 years of age. For the younger boys, there's some moms in the picture. But at fifth, from fifth grade and up, it's all men leading those boys, and it's men on the camp campgrounds. It's men men going out and doing these things. And, and you talked about how boys and girls are different. I spent the weekend with 600 trailmen in Houston uh, for three days. And by the third day, it was getting a little bit stinky around there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, but uh, you know, that, that that's a male-centric environment and nobody seemed to care. And uh, it was just, it was, so those boys get to come. I remember my wife saying one time when I came home with my two sons from a, from a, from a, 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 a trail life camping trip, and first of all, she made us undress on the porch because she says, you're not coming in here in those clothes. <laughs> and then she said, you know what? When you boys come home, you're smellier, but you're taller. Mm. And I thought, wow, that is really something because they spent the weekend around boys and men. You know, their spine is straighter and they're standing up straighter because they're, they're not feeling like somehow they don't like they don't fit. They're in an environment that they can identify and they can pull themselves up to the examples that are around them. That's powerful stuff. Yeah, that's so cool. It's so funny. As I watch my friends who have boys, we were at our um, homeschool co-op a few weeks ago and it was our last day of co-op. And it was so funny because all the kids were just riled up. And at one point, a group of these middle school, high school boys started fighting with one another. And I don't mean like they, they weren't angry with each other. They were just being boys, Sure. but they were throwing punches and they were pushing each other and they're laughing as they're doing it. It was so <laughs> funny. And I, I actually had to break it up because we have a lot of little kids there. Um, and I just said, I said, I understand that you guys need to do this and that, you know, it's totally fine. I said, just not here. Like <laughs> you have to go do this somewhere else. And it's, you know, one of our co-op rules, like they can't punch each other in the middle of co-op. Um, <laughs> But it was just so funny to see them that they were actually enjoying punching one another and yeah. shoving each other. And I was like, girls would never do that. That is just not a girl thing. You know, if a girl punches or hits another girl or shoves her, it's because she's angry with her, not because she's yeah. trying to prove herself as a woman. Yeah. And so as we look at what it is to be a man, that's what you're doing with trail life is you're truly training up these men or these, these young boys to become men. Mm -hmm. What what exactly does that mean? What does it mean to teach them how to be a man? Because obviously it's more than just loving Jesus and shaving and knowing how to put up a tent. 
Yeah. No, that's that's amazing. So we use that adventure experiencing experience to develop character and to develop leadership. You know, if there was a better way, you know, when you when you read our vision statement, um, it doesn't talk specifically about what we do, but we are turning boys into godly men. If there was a better way of turning boys into godly men than using the outdoors, we would be doing that. But there's something about the outdoors and those sorts of challenges and encountering God there and nature and creation and things like responsibility. I mean, you only brought one pair of socks. We told you to bring two. Your tent flooded last night because you didn't follow instructions to set it up the right way. You know, uh, that won't happen again when those things happen because boys learn. They learn responsibility. My boys, you know, they, they, they at a very young age, uh, they, we would sit down and if we had a camping trip or even at family vacations, um, we had a dry erase board. Each one of them had a little square of a dry erase board. We say, okay, guys, write down what it is that you need to bring and then go pack it. So, so parents would say to us, your boys pack their own suitcases? Yeah, because they've gone camping and they've done their stuff for, for, for years and they understand. So they learn things like, like that sort of responsibility. Um, and, and they learn things with, through that. They're developing their character because they're learning things like, if I don't prepare myself, if I don't think about this thing, there's not mom isn't going to swoop in on a helicopter and save me here i'm going the rest of the weekend with wet socks or a wet sleeping bag or whatever now of course we have men there making sure that they're not that they're not getting hurt but but it is opportunity for the for them to grow character or even this weekend out in houston we had terrible storms on 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 friday night and they had to abandon the campground because it's because of lightning um, but and so they didn't sleep well and they got up the next day as a full day of activities and they were kind of tired, but 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 they they knew they still had a great time, and they have a great story to talk about how you know the storm came in and was blowing their tent around, and so these are great stories that develop. And then of course we develop opportunities. We, we start with adventure that develops character, and then it gives them opportunities for leadership. Very few opportunities in our culture today for boys to develop character because we don't expect a lot from them, and to to to, and to, and to encounter leadership situations. Now they're looking for good, solid leadership. That's why gangs are growing as fast as they are. They're looking for really structured, solid leadership that has clear expectations. Like I said, that's why gang gangs do such a good job of helping boys to understand leadership. But but uh, we're not giving them those opportunities that we're So in trail life, they're leading troops, they're leading their patrol. It's on them as boys to say, where are we gonna find our water? Uh, today on a long hike or or who's bringing the food or who's in charge of cleanup or who's going to hang the bear bag so we don't get eaten by bears tonight and those <laughs> sorts of things uh, boys are working on together and they're electing leaders they're they're assuming their leadership roles and they're learning how to lead so we take the adventure and through the adventure we're developing their character and then also giving them opportunities to lead and that's how you're growing boys into godly men and of course the christ likeness and the Christ is infused throughout the entire program. In fact, we talk about like carrot and the carrot cake. You get a piece of carrot cake, you don't got big hunks of carrot in there, but there's carrot in every bite. And that's how Christ is infused throughout our program, where it doesn't feel like Sunday school and it doesn't feel necessarily churchy because some boys have had enough of that, but it feels like they're in the outdoors with men and they're encountering Christ all throughout the day through their badge work, through praying together, through uh, asking God to, to, to bless their day by by uh, by uh, calling each other accountability when they're when they're, when they're not behaving uh, like like they want like 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 they follow Christ and so all that in that setting it's an amazing uh, school you know in a weekend in a typical Trail of USA weekend they're spending more hours uh, than they spend an entire year in Sunday school and they're surrounded by godly men in a godly setting that can't help but have a positive influence on boys. You know, it's like us as homeschool parents. We don't just sit down and say, okay, here's the Bible. We're going to read three verses for today and then be done with it. No, a, any good Christian intentional homeschool parent is going to, throughout the day, find opportunities to teach our kids about Jesus and to point them mm -hmm. to Jesus. And so it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing through Trail Life is it's not just a like, okay, one time let's read the Bible or let's memorize a verse. But when you're together, when you're with these boys, you're constantly feeding them truths mm. of God's word and it's strengthening them. And you you talked about your wife talking about how you and your boys walked in stinky, but taller. I think that happens spiritually as well with our kids is that when we're constantly feeding them the word of God and we're constantly feeding them truth and righteousness, 
they just stand a little bit taller spiritually and, and they can't help but to do that, right? They really do. And yeah. then being surrounded by all these other peers of theirs mm -hmm. who are doing the same thing. I mean, there's no better formula for these boys wanting to learn more and to become better, more godly men. Yeah. And, and when you talk about godly men, the men are going through this experience too. Yeah. You got to remember that 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 men, just like boys, they have a desire for risk and competition and do something significant and to, to make an impact on the world, but they don't have many opportunities to do that. Yeah. And so in the outdoors with these boys, now they are doing ministry. You know, they're a whole weekend with boys. And so men are discovering, oh my gosh, I am a minister of the gospel. You know, maybe in my church, I help park cars or I help clean stack chairs or, you know, certainly I can, I can serve around the church, but here I am having an impact on the next generation. And so that raises men up because they feel that sense of responsibility and their behavior and their relationship with the Lord begins to grow too, because they realize how those boys are focused on them. They are now models and examples of Christ likeness. And so they, they step up their game in the outdoors and men have these wonderful uh, godly relationships, you know, men don't do really well sitting across the table, a cup of coffee, talking right. about <laughs> growing in God, but side by side, turning a wrench or hiking a trail or something like that, men bond in that way. And, and they watch each other and they grow from each other. When the boys bed down at night, those men are sitting around the fire and they're saying, Hey, I, you know, I saw the way you talk with your son today. How, how'd you get that relationship with him? Or, 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 you know, I'm struggling with something at work or at home and, you know, some, Sometimes I'm not doing my best to represent Christ. Help me with that. And these guys have these amazing conversations around a fire where they're all looking at the fire, not deeply into each other's eyes. Right. <laughs> you know, they're looking into the fire, just pondering these things and looking at the stars above and thinking about these deep things. So not only are we seeing these boys becoming godly men, we're seeing the godly men in the program being strengthened and finding a brotherhood that they don't have any place else. That is incredible. Well, we're out of time. We're going to come back um, next time. We're going to talk more about um, the, the proven process of growing godly uh, men, growing our boys into godly men. Um, Mark, tell us really quickly where people can find out more about Trail Life USA. Well, thanks, traillifeusa.com, Trail Life, two L's in the middle. And right now we've got a couple of books on there, eBooks uh, for free download. So I encourage you go, to go there. You can also look, click on Get Connected and there's a map of the United States. will show you where the troops are. Put in your zip code and it'll show you the one that's closest to you. Awesome. And you also have a podcast as well. Um, what's the podcast? Raising Godly Boys is one minute uh, podcast, uh, Raising Godly Boys. All right. I'll put all those links in the show notes to make it easy for you guys. You guys, if you would subscribe to this channel, if you're watching it on YouTube, um, like and subscribe and share this with your friends. If you're listening to it through a podcast app, please share this with your friends, um, especially those friends of yours who have boys, um, so that you can just sharpen one another and know how to come alongside each other to grow your boys into godly men. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you back here next time. Bye. Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children.